the Supreme Court a few days ago came out with its reasons, not actually yesterday, but a few days ago came out with a 5-2 decision that the Speaker of Parliament was wrong in declaring four seats vacant. They've given their reasons. But let's look at the technicalities of what exactly is happening in and within the parties. And for those going independent, how does this even help or influence their activities in the various constituencies? We're starting from the Fomena constituency. Why is this uh, a constituency of interest? One, it's one of the four that were declared vacant. Now, the member of parliament, Andre Siama, is still a member of parliament based on what the Supreme Court has said. However, if you follow the backstory, he used to be a member of the NPP, came to parliament on the ticket of the NPP. Um, because of internal wranglings and primaries, he lost. There were issues. The party booted him out because he said he wanted to go independent and won as an independent candidate. So MPP lost in that constituency, but managed to work their way to get him into their fold. But for him, the MPP wouldn't be majority in parliament, right? Absolutely. And it's very interesting because, look, what the Supreme Court has effectively done is that they've more or less said that the actions of these individuals does not affect their position in parliament currently. The current parliament. Position. So in simple terms, they are still within the fold of their various parties. And so if you pick a seat like Formina, and Formina is very unique, like you did indicate, because unlike the other ones that we'll be looking at subsequently, mm -hmm. with this one, you have an individual who is returning to the fold of the new patriotic party, as against the other ones where you have someone leaving the NDC right. and you again have others, other two individuals leaving the NPP. And so for Formina constituency, it's a typical MPP seat. Since 1996, seven times they've won the presidential polls there. No contest, the NDC, they do not do well over there at all. In terms of the parliamentary, you can see 601. The one is for Andrew Siama, the independent candidate who is currently the second deputy speaker of parliament. Mm. And like you did indicate, 2020, when he was unhappy with how the party had conducted the parliament, the primaries, MPP primary, he left the fold of the party. After the party had actually even said that, look, he's not someone that he could work with. They dismissed him from the party. The seat was declared vacant. Mm. The president went there and said that he cannot work with an independent candidate. We saw what happened. He showed them power. He won the election. The MPP had to go back to him and plead with him to come back and do business with them. And that ensured that the MPP had a hold. The NDC still did not really stand they any chance there. They couldn't capitalize on this uh, at all. issue too. And when we win. look closely at the outcome there, you see Andrea Isiama Mwaku getting 12,805. Mm. You see Philip Ufoya Santi, who represented the MPP, getting 10,798, with the NDC's Christina Barabu getting 2,608. So you see that even though you technically had two people from the MPP contesting the same election, right. the NDC's chances were still very, very insignificant. Right. It didn't really improve their chances in any manner. Yeah. And so going into the 2024 election, the NDC, they've changed their candidate. The MPP is also changing their candidate, but they are bringing the current member of parliament mm -hmm. back into the fold. And so it promises to be one that all other things being equal, the MPP is likely to regain it's it. even though they still have an yeah. individual who is within their fold because it's an independent candidate yeah. is coming back to the NDC. You know, for this one, the, 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 the other issue that some will talk about is what really is on the minds of the NPP voters in the region or in the constituents. We know there are some who would vote NDC. Clearly, for 2,000 people voting for you in the constituency, if you tally all of these numbers, you're looking at about maybe uh, 33,000 thereabout, yeah. right? So... Out of that, you have 2,600 that voted for the NDC. It could go up, it could come down, but at least there is a number for the NDC. But within the fold of the NPP, that was split because there was an independent candidate who the party preferred. Now that he's coming into the fold of the party, wouldn't that be a slap in the face of those that disagreed with how the party dealt with the previous misunderstandings? Could it be that they've managed to resolve all the underlying issues that brought... Um, Andre Siama breaking out to be an independent candidate. If so, then we can safely say, or even between now and December 7, project that it's going to be an easy win for the MP. In fact, the good thing that they did with the primaries that took place, so if you recall, when they were doing the primaries to decide who leads them in which constituency, mm. they didn't organize one for Fomena. Right. They waited for a while. After they had done the main one, and subsequently they just did a declaration for Andre Siama. Siama. And, I mean, it's clearly because of how despite how the party had treated him, yeah. he nonetheless stuck with the party. Yeah. I mean, I remember during the discussions around who forms the majority, there were suggestions that the NDC had tried to even reach out to him, mm -hmm. potentially for him to have joined yeah, them or caucus with them. I mean, this is someone, the president of the Lancet, 
He cannot do business with an yeah, independent it's member. It's shocking, right? That the president will go to the constituency to say that yeah. he cannot work yes. with an independent member. And that notwithstanding. <laughs> so, Probably I mean, a lot of people will say he's a proper party man. Yes. Because that notwithstanding, he put the interest of the MPP above yes. his personal Personally. disagreement with the president and the governing the Patriotic Party for that matter. Went back into their fold, worked with them, was second deputy speaker, has now gone in and is going to represent them in the party. I do not see much of a problem happening with Formula if you compare to the other areas. And it also tells you that you cannot discount the intelligence of the electorate. The electorate knew who they wanted to vote for. Or a few days ago on the show, we discussed the, um, how national politics is totally different from parliamentary politics or parliamentary elections. For parliamentary, a number of people in the last elections voted Sket and Blas because the dynamics are totally different from the national one. Here, it could also stem from the fact that this man, because he was an indigent of the area, people knew him beyond political lines. So there is a likelihood that there were even people who are NDC or of other political lineage that voted for him because of the personal relationship or the fact that he was um, one of them, a home person. So it, like we indicated, it is straightforward, likely that he's returning to parliament. And the NPP had to find ways of reasoning with him by even giving him the position he holds in parliament. It probably was one of the baits they threw to get him to work or caucus with them in parliament. So that's what's happening in the Formina constituency. It's one of the four we are discussing, the four that were declared vacant. Now that decision has been reversed. And from Formina, we're going to one other that is very key in terms of the bones of contention and how both the NDC and the NPP need to work. Otherwise, if st things turn as they are, the NPP is likely to lose two of their seats, or currently they are within their fold, but if the elections are anything to go by, that these two people are going independent. If they do go and move with the numbers, I will show you the numbers, they go with the numbers that they won with, there's a likelihood it could affect the numbers of the MPP in parliament for the next, the ninth parliament. But before we do the MPP, let's go to Amenfi Central. What's happening in Amenfi Central? Amenfi is very similar to Formina, but I think your only disagreement will be on the strength of the candidates involved potentially, whether Apita Kwachiaka will be as strong as uh, you had Andrea Mwakwesi uh, the, the similarity I make the point about is the fact that it's, this is also the stronghold of the NDC, like the way Formina is the stronghold of the MPP. Uh, I mean, Fee Central is a, a stronghold of the NDC. So you've seen the presidential results since 1996. The NDC has won seven times. Mm. The MPP is yet to win there. For the, the 2020 parliamentary results, for instance, you saw the MP, NDC winning with a difference of 4,174. Mm. And so it's not, someone will look at it and say, well, it's not too wide a gap. But the context really is that the NDC tends to do very well. Now, the challenge for the NDC is that their front is divided at this particular level here mm. uh, because... There's Joanna Jan Kujo, who is the NDC's candidate. Uh, in the previous discussions that we had had, we had put a question mark. She's now on the ballot now. They've gotten the call to set aside that injunction. Mm -hmm. Then there is Patrick uh, Hoxin Ampontin, who is the MPP candidate, also the DCE for Wasa, Amenfi Central District. Then there is Peter Yaokwachiaka, the current member of parliament, who is contesting as an independent candidate. Mm -hmm. So the question many are asking is, look, the difference of 4,000 that we have here, if Kwachiaka picks up say 6,000 of those votes, is he picking the 6,000 from here or is he picking from here? <laughs> there are those who say that, look, he's an NDC man. He's going right. to pick most likely from, from here because he was on the ballot in 2020 anyways and they gave him 26,000. Mm -hmm. So the thinking is that if he does anywhere around five to 6,000, then potentially Joanna Kujojan is in danger. Mm -hmm. And that is if all things remain constant and the NPP still give at least above 20,000 to their candidate. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so then that becomes uh, an issue of, well, what will happen there? But what many are also looking out and saying is that, look, she's a strong candidate because she was disqualified. And right. we all saw people protesting in the area. Mm -hmm. We all saw individuals going on the street and saying that, look, we have to have her back in the election because of how crucial they considered her to be in, the, in that area. Uh, Peter Yaokwatiaka, interestingly, had a similar posturing like the former member of parliament. Mm -hmm. When this whole... Uh, vacancy Buha started. I mean, he stated quite clearly that he didn't have any problem if the NDC was unable to get a candidate onto the ballot. He didn't mind doing business with them and even helping them win the seat, even though he was contested as an independent candidate. Right. I, I don't know uh, whether you think we could have Formina play out and Peter Yaquatiaka uh, grabbing the seat, but I think it will certainly come down to how well the NDC is able to improve its numbers. Mm -hmm. If the MPP is able to still keep its performance within this range, then if Kwachiaka just crosses 
the 4,000 oh, range, Mark. then Joanna Kujo potentially could be in trouble. Yeah, and then uh, again, it's also quite surprising to note that in the constituency, it was the first time in a long time that um, a primary that went... No, let me rephrase. So it was the, it was the first time that leadership of the NDC had to go to the constituency to try and resolve the issue because the leadership of the, the national leadership of the NP, NDC thought that from that very level, they preferred this candidate. They've had their own issues with Peter uh, Kwachiaka and wanted this lady to stand. However, there were internal uh, issues on the ground. So for the party to even send a lawyer to represent her, for them to stay consistent, in fact, hold a press conference where um, Fifi Kwete himself had to address the media, it tells you the, the national leadership of the party have particular interest in the Memphis Central constituency. Yeah. Although it's a safe seat for them, they've won it over time. I mean, it's because of the danger of the numbers. And, and in the game of politics, especially with what you've seen in the current parliament of 137, 137, with one independent candidate, yeah. Yeah. if you want to lose a seat, what you don't want to lose is your safe seat. Yes. It makes sense yeah. if you struggle over the floating ones, the, the swing ones, like mm. we call them, and maybe lose one or two there. But you want to start the election off with your safe seat in hand mm. so that at least you fight for the others and hope that you end up forming the majority. So that is uh, the story at Memphis Central. Right. And is the MPP repeating their candidate? Yes, they are coming with uh, Patrick Hoxson. I'm pointing, who is currently the DCE for Wasam in Fish Central District. He's been embarking on quite a number of projects there in the area as well. Mm -hmm. It's a typical mining area. It's one of the areas that battles with illegal mining as well. Right. And so it's one of those areas that uh, people can look at and say that, look, uh, if, has government done enough to fight illegal mining? Will mm -hmm. it have any implications, etc., mm -hmm. etc.? Et All those issues are things that they will look at over there as well. All right. So and then again, it also buttresses the point that local politics, you cannot undermine or, you know, you cannot underrate the thinking of the people on the ground. It was interesting how people on the ground had to advocate and keep pushing until national leadership thought that, no, we needed to go and try and rectify the situation and then get uh, everyone in line. So fortunately, they have their candidate, their preferred candidate, as to how that would affect Peter Yaokwache is a different ballgame. We'll try and look at that in subsequent conversations here on Election 360. So from Memphis Central, we're going to uh, the two key constituencies that are now within the fold of the NPP, with the NPP candidates deciding to walk away from the party and go independent, starting from the Suhum constituency. What's the story when it comes to presidential? So for the presidential, we see 6-1. Uh, the MPP has picked it up six times, 2000, 04, 08, 2012, 2016, and 2020. The NDC, the only time, 1996. And so uh, that is one that you can say that the presidential is comfortably an MPP seat. And it's interesting because it is in the central region. And central region, most of the seats mostly do not behave this way. Right. But we have uh, that particular uh, constituency behaving that way. So this is for whom in the eastern region, actually, which is a stronghold of the uh, governing New Patriotic Party. Right. And so you've seen it 6-1. And so that is very typical of how the Eastern Region tends to vote. When you go for the parliamentary, it's also very similar to the situation uh, for the presidential as well. So you also have that one also being 6-1 there, the MPP picking it six times, the NDC just coming once. The 2020 results, you see a difference of 14,857. Uh, what is going to be a bit of a challenge going into this year's election is the fact that there's Frank Isidou Bekwen Potozwa, like he's called. There's Prince K. Ado Tebe, who is contesting for the NDC. Then there's the independent candidate, Kojo Asante, who is the current member of parliament, who was the one who got the 34,049 votes. And when we compared this figure to the previous 2016, he had increased the numbers of the MPP mm -hmm. in the Sum constituency. Mm -hmm. And so that tells you that, look, he's a formidable candidate. And it took him a while to declare his intention to contest as an independent candidate. Like many politicians do many at times when elections don't go their way, he said he was waiting and listening to the grassroots right. and the calls were too loud. Mm. And so he decided to throw his hat into the race. Mm. So he's coming in. And so the question again that we asked for the other ones is that if the MPP candidate does around this and you have uh, Kojo Asante coming in and even crossing 15,000, or is he going to be able to get a 30,000 range that he got? Mm. Do the people of Sum love him enough? Putozwa is a, a staffer at the presidency. Right. And many accusations were made about issues of illegal mining. They had also talked about the fact that, look, they felt that the powers that be at the Jubilee House were solidly behind him. And that is what took Kojo Asante out of that parliamentary primary and resulted in his defeat. Mm. All those are matters that the party, unfortunately, could not resolve in a timely manner. Right. 
He's been deemed to be doing business with the MPP in Parliament, yeah. but on the ticket, this is how it looks, and he'll be joining them as well. And so it comes back to whether these numbers are anything to go by and whether it will have yeah. any implications. It brings to mind the Fomena constituency conversation again, where someone from within the fold of the NPP has decided to go independent because of unresolved primary issues. And he clearly, from everything he has said, the interviews is granted, show that he has been outmuscled by uh, Protozoa or uh, Fra Francesca Dubequin, who has the institution backing him. So he is actually aggrieved. And again, political parties are unable to resolve some of these things properly or in time for major elections. So it looks like, based on how the seat has voted in time past, it could be a safe seat for the NPP. Look at the NDC's numbers. Even after the NDC held their primaries and uh, settled on Prince K. Adotebri, the NDC members in the constituency started raising concerns that their gentleman or their candidate had disappeared. In fact, there were stories about he going missing. And it was on the back of the fact that he is actually a resident out of the country. So he, right after the primaries, he traveled out. And they are believed that he was looking, was going to try and get some funding to come and push his campaign. So within that period of his absence, the party people were concerned that he, they couldn't find him. And it was affecting mobilization and campaign activities. Well, we do know that he's back. But as to whether or not he actually has the entire backing of the NDC to at least sustain the 19,000 or increase it is a different conversation. And also on the, on, the, on the back of the fact that the person he contested with, and we're talking about the NDC candidate, the person he contested with actually still has some backing within the fold of the NDC. So immediately he wasn't seen around for about a week or two. That candidate was being projected more or less. But of course, electorally, this is the man that had been elected. So the NDC had no option than to back him. If he is to undo the potential win of the MPP, then he needs to claw way past 25,000. Then it means that this difference is what he also needs to, or the NDC needs to capitalize on, try as much as possible to even half this and add to their numbers. And then we can actually have a two-horse race. I mean, I think the point needs to be made strongly that it's important for political parties to make their internal process as democratic as possible. Because if you simply look at the trend and say that it's a safe seat for our party, we go back to Formina and Formina will tell you that mm. you can't downplay that. Mm. But I agree with you perfectly on the fact that he needs to do a bit better. But the advantage that he gets going into the race is the fact that he is going to naturally get votes from the NDC. Mm -hmm. So the NDC, if the NDC is generally doing around this figure, because of the increase in the voter population in that area generally and everything, he can simply go a little above the 19,000. Mm -hmm. Now, the danger is this difference here. If the MPP's current member of parliament, if he just manages to claw anything from within this range, and if he, he's in within the 10,000 range, right. that right. makes it very dangerous yeah. for the fortunes of the MPP. And so it comes down to the point about how important it is always that you just don't want to be in this situation. And I keep on saying that with what happened with the 137, 137, it was very important that the parties run their primaries in a manner that was credible or at least satisfactory to even people who are, are peeved yeah. with the outcome so that they, some of these things do not happen. Yeah, so it's going to be a very keenly contested constituency there at Suhum. The NDC has, or probably, is, you can say it probably is for the NDC to lose because the NPP is currently split between the incumbent and another individual contesting on the ticket of the NPP. All right, our final constituency we are looking at out of the four that were declared vacant and reversed is the Agona West constituency. It's an interesting conversation here because it is, you can't say it is an all clear for the NPP. Why so? If you look at the numbers, the number of times the NPP has won, five times, the NDC has won it twice. 96, of course, under uh, former President Rawlings in the early days of our democracy, so people didn't really know what was happening. They preferred the NDC at the time. But over time, the conversation has changed. Now we have the NDC also winning in 2012, and in 2012, the key pointer is that that was when former President John Evans and Temels had died, and there was a natural, um, apath uh, I beg your pardon, sympathy vote that supported the NDC candidate then. So presidential-wise, the NDC won that election in that constituency as well. But for the parliamentary, when the NDC won, the margin wasn't that big. But let's look at why it is under uh, contention. 
there is an issue within the fold of the NPP. Why is there an issue in the fold of the NPP? I mean, you have a former minister, Cynthia Morrison. It's a former gender minister. She's contesting as an independent candidate. And so coming up against Paul Ofori Amwa. So this was the 2020, 2020 results, actually, results. and this is how it looked. So she was able to grab the seat, getting 30,513. Then you have the NDC candidate getting a little around 27,673. Then you have the independent candidates getting about a thousand votes. Now, the difference was 2,840. Mm -hmm. The challenge really is going into the 2024 contest. So, just like the other three that we've discussed, the NPP has a candidate there, Christopher Arthur, there's Cynthia Morrison, then the NDC is bringing uh, an Estino for you, Dambe. Mm. It's been a contentious race, one of fights. You recall the gunshots, that, that incident that happened. Yeah. Uh, the story is that some persons belonging to both sides, the MPP and the independent candidate clashed, clashed. gunshots were fired. Mm. We don't know which side fired the gunshots or whatever it is. But that smells of an internal implosion that is mm. happening. Because these two individuals are typically MPP people. And they know themselves as well. They know themselves as well. But due to internal disagreement and not being happy with the outcome of the elections, Cynthia Morrison is going uh, as an independent candidate. Mm. And when they were doing the press conferences with this whole thing happening yeah. in Parliament, she was with Afanya Markin and Co. And I think that Cynthia Morrison, I mean, f as an observer from afar, I think I get the feeling Cynthia Morrison is confusing her voters. Are, are you breaking away from the party or you are actually with the party? The fact that you say you are going independent doesn't mean that um, you, uh, you can still do business with the party. You're, you should clearly define those lines. And unfortunately, that is where people still keep going back to the declaration of the speaker and why they thought that should, that should have stood. The Supreme Court's decision now even brings further confusion to electorates, especially when you have Cynthia Mamble Morrison doing business with the MPP, still going to meet the leadership. And I get the feeling that she thought that they needed, she needs their backing to win the seat. But they cannot come and back you openly when they also have a candidate in the race. So there is going to be the formula issue likely to play out. I mean, in the, that the only advantage for Cynthia Morrison, for Kojo Asante, I think there's a, an advantage that a lot of us maybe we are not looking at yet, is the fact that if they win as independent candidates, it shouldn't be too difficult for them to continue to do business with okay. the MPP okay. because of how they've conducted themselves around this time. Because unlike the formula situation as well, the president hasn't uh, said he, he can't work with Cynthia yeah. Morrison. I think the president has, 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 <laughs> has advised learned. himself. <laughs> yes, I mean, <laughs> and, and it will be interesting to see if Dr. Baumia goes to that constituency, what the message there will be. Will be because yeah. obviously he'll be lifting the hand of Christopher Atta and not Cynthia Morrison. Yes. And there's the potential that she can win the seat as well. Mm. And so it's very dangerous for the MPP over here. Uh, the same thing with the Sum situation as well. And it mm. comes back to the same point that, well, what is going to happen here? Will it go in favor of the NDC? Because what the NDC would need is that they have to keep their performance or improve it and hope that this difference is clawed mm. and some taken from this 30,000, which will be improving, I mean, because of the voter population. Yeah. Some is taken from the MPP candidates. Then they will say that, well, NSCNA could stand a chance yeah. of picking up that particular And, and again, it, is, it stands to reason why Cynthia thinks she has to run again. One, she, has, she won convincingly. Secondly, she became a minister. And one, you can also agree that or uh, assume that she has enough financial muscle or resources to go again and had done things in the constituency for which she believes they should have be, the people should have naturally given her another term. But you know, politics is very dynamic. Probably while you were a minister and you're in Accra trying to do government business, someone else was doing business behind you in the constituency. So it's a, it's a major challenge for her. She just couldn't come to terms with the fact that a constituency she thought she had won convincingly for the party is breaking or is pushing her out during the primaries. So it's actually a, an issue she's dealt with. Unfortunately, they are unable to resolve it. And as we stand, she's going independent. As to how much damage she'll do to the NPP candidate, we are unable to tell. Unfortunately, again, for the NDC, they've changed their candidate. You would have thought that based on the numbers the NDC yeah. got, 27,000 is substantial in a total vote of, let's say, uh, 80,000. 27,000 is quite substantial. It's not too far from what the NDC MPP candidate got. So if MPP, NDC was minded, beg your pardon, it's MPP, NDC keeps confusing. But if the NDC was minded, they could have at least either kept the candidate, unless the candidate says he or she wouldn't attempt again. They could have at least kept that candidate. 
and do a bit more, then the current confusion between the NDC and MPP could have helped the NDC somewhat. I mean, there's some arrogance with the two main political parties. It's there. They keep on looking at the numbers and they make the point that, look, anyways, we already start around this figure. That, that is what keeps on yeah. playing in their minds. Yeah. So it's just like even the presidential elections. You, the two main parties, they are going to get more than 45% anyways. Yes. And so if they don't think that it's necessarily a candidate. So if you are not getting the seat for them, sometimes they would want to simply mm, change, change you and try someone else. Yeah. But I, I mean, I agree with you. Because of now the potential of having a repeat two candidates from the same party taking place, mm. maybe sticking to the same candidate could have helped their chances. Mm. One will also make the argument that, well, it's also a fresh face with some form of new energy that is coming in there. And the central region, for generally how that particular region behaves, even though the Agona West generally is slightly an advantage for the MPP, the NDC can maybe mm. run into it. So the work largely is on the MPP. They have a lot of work to do in the Agona West to ensure that uh, Christopher Atta retains the seat of Cynthia Morrison who is contesting independent, but is still in parliament yes. and doing business <laughs> with, with the MPP. All right.